Did you know that Photoshop is not only an incredible tool for image editing and drawing, but it is also a great software to do frame-by-frame -frame animations? Today I will be showing you my process for animating in Photoshop. Well, hello there, I'm Didwal. If you don't know me yet, I make bi-weekly drawing videos with ink on paper as well as digital. You can subscribe by clicking the red button on the screen. I also like to make short animations for my intros, for which I think Photoshop is the perfect tool. Let's get started by pulling up the proper interface. I'm assuming you already have chosen a canvas with the right size and resolution. Now you're going to click the Window tab at the top of the screen, then Workspace, then Movement. And yes, my interface is in French, but don't worry, you'll be fine. At the bottom of your interface, a large panel has opened up. You need to choose between a frame animation and a video edit. I highly recommend you choose frame animation. Now that that's done, go to the options, the three little lines to the right. There you want to make sure you have create a new layer selected and visible layers unchecked. The way the animation panel works is that you have all your frames visible at the bottom. Under each frame, you can click and set the duration time. By holding Ctrl or Shift, you can select and choose the time duration of many layers at once. That's all you need for the interface. Now, we can draw. For your first image, create a new layer and draw on it. The more complex your subject is, the more layers you will need to make sure all the important elements are separated. For a walking character, for example, you will need different layers for each leg, the arms, the torso, etc. Here I want to make a transforming shape, so I will be using only one layer at a time. In any case, I like to work with folders, so I'll put all these layers in a single group. Drag the entire group over the new layer button to duplicate it. I didn't know you could do that before, and duplicating with a simple click and drag is cool, isn't it? Now turn the new group's visibility off with the eye icon. After you're happy with your first image, let's go to the bottom left, below your frames. Click the second to last button. This creates a new frame. Now you can turn invisible your first folder and turn visible the second one. And now it's time to modify the layers of the second group. Then it's rinse and repeat. Duplicate, create a new frame, turn off the previous frames group and draw. That was all the very basic steps, now I'm going to start speeding up my animation. I will be commenting along the process, explaining how it works and telling you everything I have learned about it. All the tidbits of info and tips I wish I'd known sooner. So the way you animate with Photoshop is with layer visibility. What I mean is that all the frames fully exist at each given time of your animation. You're just toggling which ones are on and off. This is why it's important to duplicate and draw on different groups. If you alter a frame, it is altered in every other frame. By duplicating, you can make modifications, erase, add, move around, but the original isn't touched at all. Note that you could simply work on a single layer per frame and a new layer will be created for each new frame. That's why we click the option in the beginning. That would allow you to bypass the whole grouping and duplicating process. But I found that if you do it that way, it makes it harder to see the layer below when you're drawing. There are no onion peels in this part of the Photoshop animation software, and if you turn on the visibility of the last layer and lower its opacity, you have to remember to revert it to 100% opacity and turn it off before you move on, or else it will affect the previous frame. By duplicating, it creates a bunch more layers in total, but you can see what you've drawn on the previous frame. And with the new layer created each time automatically, what I do is draw on it while I see the duplicated layer below. Then I delete the layer. Since it's a duplicate, it won't affect the previous frame. As you can see in my drawing process, my subject is quite simple. It's a simple shape transformation and semblance of rotation on screen. The truth is, I'm definitely not an animation professional and I'm learning as well. This is a good exercise, however, as the process is rather straightforward. This is the longest animation I ever made in Photoshop, and I learned a few things while I did it. For example, even before you start creating your frames, you should create a bunch of new layers that you will keep empty at the bottom of your layers panel. 
This way they will stay visible in every single frame rather than only at the step you create them at. This is what I did with the large rectangle around my animation. That's a guide as to where I wanted the shape centered. As you will see when I add the hand later, I didn't create enough layers like that, so I had no choice but to turn on the hand layers manually for every single one of my frames. Rookie mistake. Another tip I can give you right now is to make sure your layers have proper names. Or your layer groups at least. For an animation like this, it doesn't really matter because the animation process is linear. But if you have some action on screen, you will need to know which layer is where at all times and what movement which frames corresponds to. Now I want to talk a little bit about the limitations of using Photoshop to animate, while I keep on drawing on screen. And mind you, some of these limitations are more related to me and my workflow than the software itself. Feel free to tell me what you think in the comments or if you have any idea on how to bypass these limitations. With this type of animation, it makes it really hard to add something after you're done creating an animation. For example, the hand I add at the end, but it would be the same with background for example. If you add it after, you have to manually make it visible for every frame, which can be a hassle if you have over 100 frames. Same goes with coloring, if you want to do it after rather than know you're going to do that from the start. One thing you could do is go into video edit mode with the button at the very left of the bottom panel. There you can work on different channels like when you're editing a video. But once you're in there, there's this very annoying thing that when you create a new frame, the new frame's duration is automatically set at 5 seconds. And trust me, I did that before I knew any better and to have to manually resize every frame you make is just a pain in the ass. In the end, Photoshop isn't the best tool for animation. I mean, Adobe has a software called Animate, so there's a reason for it. I like it because it's simple and I'm only doing simple animations that don't need a lot of work. Once you're done animating and you're satisfied with your work, you just have to export it as a mp4. As for me, the animation is done. Let's watch it. If you want to see more of my work, please consider subscribing using the button below the video. Do also leave a like and comment, I would appreciate that a lot. As always, you can check more of my work on my Instagram at d 3 and I'll see you in the next video. You can click on the left to watch a playlist of all my digital drawing videos and on the right to learn how to edit a drawing video. That was Detroit and I'm off. Bye!